Salofa, Kiora, and welcome. Welcome to another segment of Organic and Artificial, where we'll be continuing from our last topic, which was Sabbath, and today's topic would be Sunday. Joining me today be my panelist, Elizabeth Perakina, Tai Minori, Junior Pritchard, and our fair assistant minister, Joseph Hunt. Welcome, welcome, Minister. It's an honour to have you once again to um, just to share your experience and your knowledge where we'll be answering these questions organic through the Bible and artificial man made. So we're going to debate the two. And yeah, with that being said, we'll just, I'll just ask us to bow our heads and I'll open us up with a word of prayer. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for a wonderful, wonderful opportunity we have here where we can just share uh, some knowledge on on your truth, Father. I pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to, to uh, be in this room so that it may reach out to anyone listening as well as ourselves here as well. Uh, please be with us, forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' most holy name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so last, um, our last segment, we concluded that the Sabbath is the right, is the, the rightful and true Sabbath of God, mm. is, which is Saturday. So the question that we left off last time was, where did the practice of Sunday being the Sabbath, or as they call it nowadays, Lord's Day, begin, come to be, and where was the miscommunication? Amen. Thank you for the question. And it's uh, wonderful to be here again, try to answer according to the scriptures. So we'll stick straight into it. In Genesis um, 10, verse 8, as we can read where the Sunday belief starts from. This is the first mention of somebody in the scriptures, in the book of Genesis, the first book, mm -hmm. that somebody is a man-named person. He, and he said he is a god. So in Genesis 10 verse 8, and Cush began beget Nimrod and began to be a mighty one in the earth. Verse 9, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. Can you read on again verse 10 and verse 11? And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Eric, and Arad, and Alma. In the land of Shinnam. And verse, um, verse, um, verse 11. Out of, out of the, the land went forth Asher, and the Lord of Nebo, and the city where her fall, and Kalana. And then Genesis, um, <clears throat> you know, this is where we get that. Have you ever heard after the flood? And then there was um, people that didn't believe that. Uh, God's uh, covenant with uh, Noah that there's a rainbow, a sign that the earth will not be destroyed with water again. But as we read in Genesis, the earth will be destroyed, and also in the book of uh, Peter, it will be destroyed by fire. But they didn't believe that. They said, no, this is a lie. God's going to punish the earth again. <coughs> so they started build a tower. And then, you know, the Tower of Babel, and their mind was set, and they were all in unison. So that means their heart and all their mind was set to build this tower to make it to heaven their way. And then God gave them confusion because they couldn't speak the same language and pass the tools. And they scattered around. And this is where um, the Sunday, where the God, the Son, God of the Sun, start teaching comes around. Because there's a legend, and I'll just read it out. It's in the two Babylons. <coughs> The Two Babylons by Alexandra Hitzlop. It reads like this. In the Babylonian and Assyrian legend, Nimrod died in his prime, leaving a queen named Sememrius. At his death, Nimrod, according to legend, became immortal, and his spirit flew up to the sun and took possession of it. Hence, he became Belshazzar, which is, means the Lord of the Heaven. So somebody that died... This is Nimrod. When he said when he dies, he will not die, but his spirit will move to the go to the sun and he will be the sun god. 
after Nimrod had died and be became the sun god, so Memrius, his queen became pregnant and she claimed to be a virgin. And after Nimrod's death, according to legend, he got a child by Nimrod's spirit coming down on her from the sun. She proclaimed to be subjects that her husband's spirit entered into her womb through a sunbeam and begot the legendary god child named Tammuz. As we also hear in the movies, Hercules, half man, half god, taking different names, different form as they come through centuries. But this is what is said. So the queen, Nimrod in heaven, and it's not in heaven, but in the sun, he's taking over the sun and he said he is the Lord of the sun. So the sun, God of the sun. And then the people come in because uh, his queen was virgin. But she said, the sun beam from what my, my, my Lord touched me, my womb, and I became pregnant. It's a hymn, it's a, it's a myth, but, but that's how history portrays it. <clears throat> but I don't know if it's true facts. So a myth means something that it might be storytelling. But then there was somebody that was born, and his name was Tammuz. And you know what day was he was born? He was born exactly on the 25th of December. Who's born on the 25th of December when we look in the world today? That's Jesus. the day of Christmas. Mm. Christ Mass. <coughs> dismissal of Jesus Christ. Christ Mass. Dismissal of Christ. But people say, no, it's Merry Christmas. Like it's Santa. You remember Santa. And we, we know we joy because this <coughs> is the day that Jesus Christ was born. The Bible doesn't say what day Jesus Christ was born. Mm. It just tells you that he was born in the manger. Amen. And uh, the cattle were out in the field. But... Um, as we see here, so we've got this portrait of somebody that was born on December and then the teachings of a sun god. And then it comes through all the way. We fast forward quickly because of our time. When it came to the time of the Romans, Jesus had passed away. And then you heard of somebody named Constantine. See, we come through the time of Israel. We come to a certain point where you got Elijah, the only prophet. The only prophet, and he got 850 other prophets that believe in the sun god, and they said to find out who the true god is, the god that will burn the altar. You got the 850, you go first, and then they did their offering, they built, and they see, pray to their god, to the sun god, to burn the offering. And then uh, when it came to noon, and he said, louder, he's probably sleeping. And then they yell out more and they pierce their bodies, sharing blood, and nothing happened. And when they came to us in the evening, you know, Elijah said, bring more water, fill up more water. And the, and the altar was all flooded with water. And then God, and then Elijah kneeled down and he said, God, bring fire so that they may know who God is. The God that has the Sabbath is the Saturday or the seventh day of the week. And what happened? Fire came from earth, from heaven, and consumed the altar, burned everything. And there were 7,000 people that were left that did not bow to Baal, or the sun god, or the, the queen. And the same thing. It, so those teachings are all come in, and when it came to Rome, and he heard probably somebody, in a, a famous name, Constantine. As he was preparing to take over Rome, he stood there and he saw Rome. And then he looked up the sky and then his people said, What have you seen? I've seen a vision. The sun and the cross. And what does a vision tell you? We have to be Christians. We have to be baptized to be Christians. So he commanded his army, We have to go down the Melvich Bridge River and be baptized. And when we come to the other side, we are Christians. But they brought their beliefs. The name that he took was Pontiff. Pontiff means the bridge that connects earth to heaven. Same as Babel, they wanted to make, go to heaven their way, man's way, but not God's way. So they brought all these teachings in, started to infiltrate Rome, and started to bring Sunday, which means Sun God, Day of the, the Lord, or Sunday, which they worship on the first day. 
and they enforced it. And then, then you got the Israelites, if you want to worship on a Saturday, no, you have to go si outside the gates. And then, they, you know, we, we will go back in history, but keep it short. It's becoming what? Mixed now. It's uh, now been the truth has been mixed with beliefs. As you hear now, we've got two Sabbaths. People now know which is the true Sabbath. We know the true Sabbath. You can only find it in the truth. Because mm -hmm. whatever the truth, even if it's 99% right and it's not true, it's not the truth. But the truth, it's always the truth that's in the scriptures. And then you've got all these teachings from, you know, begging beliefs and teachings starting to infiltrate the truth. And people are starting to listen to it and starting to take it in. Christmas, yes, there is Christmas. The Bible doesn't say anything. Easter, people are starting to believe and have Easter eggs. No, but the Bible doesn't say anything about Easter for Jesus' death. The Bible doesn't say anything for that. And you got these teachings coming now. You know, if you go back in history, I think it's uh, 5, 3, 30, 25, that one of Pope, uh, Pope Sylvester, he said, we no longer call the sun, the, the day of the sun, Sunday or day of the day of the sun. We will not call it Sunday, or God of the Sun, but we will call it the Lord's Day. So, you know, we, we were brought up, I was born Catholic, so I always thought the Lord's Day was Sunday. And I, I believe because my, my understanding was limited. But in um, 325, Pope Sylvester changed Day of the Sun, not calling it the Day of the Sun anymore, but they call it the Lord's Day. But recently, in 2012, Pope Benedict the 16, no, we're not going to call the day of the Lord, the Lord's Day Sunday, but we will call it the rest, the Sabbath rest. And the whole world is now believing that Sunday is the day of rest. But the Bible doesn't say the first day, which is Sunday, in the Bible, that is the day of rest in the Bible. No, the day of rest is... God said, remember the seventh day, which is Saturday, mm -hmm. the seventh day of the week. And that's how it's been infiltrated and been manipulated. But I tell you, the truth will always be the truth. Yeah. You can never deceive the truth. And that's why it's hard for a lot of people to really take it in because they've been having a long relationship with their pastors, with their ministers. With the priests, they have family members that are in this church, that church. And when we speak the truth, it hurts. Why? Because their bond is very close. And they're more bonded to the church instead of the truth. But I tell you what, the church did not die for me. Jesus died for me. So it wasn't a miscommunication, but it was a infrastructed you know, from the devil, trying to deceive the people, because he's got limited time now. But uh, I hope our segment through every two weeks gets through so that you may gain little understanding and that you may have more understanding and that, that you may stand for the truth, because the truth will set us free in the book of John. Ty, you had a question connected to this? Uh, yes, so my question, um, <coughs> based on Exodus um, thirty-one fourteen, uh, we know how it's mentioned that the consequences um, of breaking this, the Sabbath, when you defile the Sabbath, equals death. What what do they mean by that? Like, what are the true consequences of breaking the Sabbath, based on that? Passage when, in the Bible. It, it's good. When God gave his law, the Ten Commandments, and then um, in the book of Daniel, it reads that um, because of the Israelites broke God's commandments, that a second set of law was brought in. And that set of law was called Moses' law. When he break God's law, which I should not steal, I should remember the Sabbath, or, you know, I should not lie or, you know, false testimony. And then you go to Moses' law, written law by his hand, and see the remedy. 
Now, in the Sabbath situation, if, if we go back when the Israelites were in 430 years, half of it was uh, slavery, half of the other year was a uh, good life. But when they came out of Egypt, first thing God taught the Israelites was to remember the Sabbath and how to keep the Sabbath, the law. Because they, they didn't know what Sabbath is because they were slaves. If you're a slave, you're not going to go up to your master and say, I'm not working today because I've got my Sabbath day. What do your master say? You're a slave. You just do what I tell you to do. And that was the first thing God wanted to his people to, to know and to teach them what the true Sabbath is as he learned from the manna. When he put the manna every day, one according to one person every day, you can take only one. But when it comes to the sixth day, you can take two. And you save the other one for the Sabbath day. Then that Sabbath day, you go out in the field, you won't find any manna. And if you leave another man, he want two because he like me, I need I eat two or more. I want to keep two. If I keep that for the next day, it comes out. It's not good anymore. But that's how God taught the Israelites what is the Sabbath day of the week. If you go to Israel, they keep the Sabbath day according all the way from them when taken out from Kepedi, uh, from from each um, Egypt. <clears throat> And then um, the question is, what are the consequences then? If you read in number 16, can somebody read in the verse uh, 31? Verse Sorry, 16. number 15, verse 31. Chapter 15? Yeah, chapter 15, number 15. Verse 31. Yes, please. Are we Exodus or? Numbers. Numbers, sorry. <clears throat> because he has despised the word of the Lord. Is that the one? Yeah. He hath broken, broken his commandment. That so shall utterly, utterly be cut off. off. His, his iniquity shall, shall be upon him. him. See, he have despised. He has despised the, the word of the Lord. So the Lord told him remember the sabbath the lord taught them the sabbath to remember the sabbath but no god it's all right i can go collect sticks because this is what this man was doing he was what collecting sticks because of the somebody that te god tells you remember the sabbath and then somebody despises the word of the lord and it says in verse 32 can you read on verse 32 and while the children of israel were in the wilderness they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. What day did he gather sticks? Sabbath day. What does the, the when you read the commandment, you shall do now work on what? The seventh day. Do all your work on the sixth day, but on the seventh day, you should rest. Why? Because God rested, God sanctified it, and God blessed it. So, read on verse um. So, the children of Israel, they saw somebody gathering sticks. And then what? Verse 30. 34, um, 33 to 34. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron, and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward, because it was not declared what shall be done to him. And then verse 35. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. See, in the Old Testament, when you break the Sabbath, you will be put to death by stoning and say here yeah, all the congregation shall stone you see the consequences of breaking the sabbath or breaking that law was severe and that was punishable by death and it's a horrible death to be stoned so we move back to the new testament because what happens if you keep breaking the sabbath we have to go to the book of hebrews 10 verse 26 what happened to somebody that despises the word of the Lord? Can you read on that, please? For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. He said, on if we sin willfully, so that means it's not, it's not like you've stolen it once, it's not like you broke it once. It's like you broke it continually. Willfully. That means we willfully sin. But the problem is 
after that we have received the knowledge of what? The truth. What is the truth? We have received the knowledge that Jesus is the truth, the word is the truth, and the Ten Commandments is the truth. So when the Ten Commandments tell you to remember the Sabbath on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the working week, God said, if you, are, you willfully sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for the sins. So that means the sacrifice that Jesus has done on the cross for you is not, not, not worthy anymore. Why? Because you have committed that sin, presumptuously sin. The one sin that David said, you know, that I pray that I don't get to, and the sin that the apostle also prayed that I don't get to, that one sin, the sin, the presumptuous sin, or willfully sinning, sinning, sinning. And they say when you still sin, sin, it's like you're grieving the Holy Spirit. You strangle it until there's no more Holy Spirit, then there's no more hope. Amen. Why? That even the sacrifice is not enough anymore. So, fortunately, we live in the world of grace that we are not stoned. <laughs> that if we break the Sabbath, let's take him out and we all stole him. We live in the world of grace, but I'm telling you, there'll be a line drawn. But where would you stand when that line is drawn? Are you going to stand for Jesus Christ on his true Sabbath, which is the seventh day? Or are you going to stand for what men say, and they say the Sabbath is what? The first day of the week, because it's a what do you had a question about uh, why this is happening in all the churches or why why people still break it? Yep. So Second Corinthians, mm. and I think uh, this is uh, one of the Second Corinthians eleven verse fourteen. So here it pretty much tells us that uh, Satan himself is now transformed into the angel of light. Can you read that, please? And and no marvel, for t Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. See, <laughs> don't be surprised. Don't be, oh, I didn't know he was here. Oh, I didn't know he was that man with the white clothes. Satan himself has transformed himself into what? Angel, angel, angel of, of light. light. Angel of light. He doesn't come in angel of darkness or in a different form, but he's transformed himself into angel of light, which means pure righteousness, that you see, oh, he's a righteous man. So that means, in other words, you can put it simply, mm -hmm. Satan has come to church. Amen. Amen. Satan is standing <laughs> upon the pulpit. And you see, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of what righteousness so who's doing the work of satan's on his behalf his ministers his preachers whose end shall be according to their works so if you have a preacher standing up there that the law is done away with don't worry don't worry about the sabbath on the seventh day of the week what did this just read? Take him outside the gates and stone him. So that means you will know the ministers, the pastors, the preachers, or the ministers of Satan through their works. What they do. You can say the first John that you can know the Lord, but if you do not keep his commandments, you are a liar. So you know the truth. You know the ministers or pastors or the, the the workers of the Satan through their works. If you also look in first Thessalonians uh, first yeah two Thessalonians two verse eight. If somebody can you just read out on the first Thessalonians? Yeah. Two so being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing. So, so, sorry, two. Thessalonians. Second. Two. Se second Thessalonians. Uh, two. two. Verse yeah. Eight. Verse nine. 
even, even him, him who is coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and, and lying wonders. wonders. What? Yeah, and then Ted? And with all deceivableness of and unrighteousness and then that perish, perish because, because they, they received not the, the love, love of the, the truth, truth that, that they, they might be saved. saved. See, <laughs> Satan's work is that he's going to come with all powers and signs and lying wonders. He's going to perform miracles. He's going to do so much thing that, oh, he's a righteous man. They can perform stuff that they can say, oh, that's, 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 that's a godly man. And then what? And he will deceive and all will be deceivable of righteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, I can't judge a preacher when he stands up there, but I can surely l say and learn a lot from what he says. Sometimes it's better for me to, you know, to see somebody and learn from them on what they do. It's like that saying that you can learn a lot from a picture. Speaks a thousand words. See, what is the preacher like? Does he drink or does he does do this or does he do work on Sabbath or does he do, you know, rest or what does he do on Sabbath? Does he do according to what the law or what God has said? And that's how you know who's the ministers who you're following. If you're following the ministers that are doing the work of Satan, doing wonderful things, but you think that's the right and the truth, but it's not. The only way you can tell the truth, even if I'm telling you I'm the right one, but if I break any of the commandments, I'm a liar myself. Amen? Amen. But fortunately, I try not to be like that because I try to keep the Ten Commandments because nobody can keep the Ten Commandments 100%. But through Jesus Christ, I am able to. And now, another reason why if... Satan has transformed himself into angel of light. If you look in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, what does that say? Wherefore, because I love you not. 2 God. Corinthians 2 verse 11? Yeah. This oh, Satan geez. should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. See, least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. These are all little, you know, little things that can get you in the wrong path just to deceive you. Like, uh, think that it might be the right way, but it'd be a way that sounds nice, but the end result is death. It's, uh, a, it's a it's a it's a deceivable advice yes so i just wanted to add on to that yes please um you know now we know that um it's no secret that satan is the master of the sea so for people like us um what hope do we have as well as uh what can how can we prepare mentally to to not be be fooled so easily by by this uh by satan well, if, if, if Satan is in, in front of me, and I depend on my strength and my knowledge, I have no hope. If I depend on myself, or my good looks, or the strength, I have no hope. Amen. None at all. But how do I have hope through the Holy Spirit? If we took in the book of Ephesians 6, and as we start reading from... The way that we can guard ourselves, the armor that we can wear, so that we may be able what to withstand the the sea for, and the devices that the you know the starts or the stuff that Satan throws at us. If you read on verse um verse eleven, so ten. If, let's read on verse eleven. Oh, Ephesians six. Ephesians six. What does it? Yeah. So verse, verse 10, let's start verse 10. Finally, Finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said what? Be strong in who? The, the Lord. Lord. Not only strong to know Jesus, but also believe in the power. See, the power of Jesus Christ. See, whoever believes in him, he has given them that power. 
And through what? The Holy Spirit. So, yeah, read on to the verse 11. Put on, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the woes of the devil. He said the whole armor of God that he may be able to what? To stand against the wiles of the devil. See, I cannot stand against the devil by myself. I need God. I need Jesus Christ. I really need Jesus Christ. I need to believe in the power of his might. And I've got to put on the whole armor. Not just, well, we're just going to go through it. Eh? And then verse 12, why? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, world against, against spiritual wickedness and high places. See, we're not fighting against our families, you know. Sometimes we, we put our churches before all the discussions of scriptures because we love our church. That's where our family grew up. My dad's a pastor, my mom's a, you know, married to a minister or whatever. And we have that great bondage with the church and we love the church. But when we start hearing the truth, then we contradict, oh, my church has the truth. They say, no, my church has the truth. I'm being church more than you have. See, but the problem that the devil has been working to deceive the people. And now when you confront the people, it says here, we're not what? We're not fight wrestling against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spirit wickedness in high places. We're fighting the devil. Amen. I'm not fighting my brother Junior here when we have a contradiction or, you know, something we have misunderstanding. We're fighting the devil. So when I see somebody, you know, really coming hushing at me and all that stuff, it, I don't see him as a, you know, as a person that's bad, but I see what's behind it. And who's behind it? It's the devil. Amen? So we read forth, what are the armor that we really need to make it through so that we can stand the lies and the deceitful ways of the devil. Can we read forth again? What verse are we on? 13? 13. Wherefore we'll take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. See, when you have full armor, you are able to stand. What are the full armor? We'll read it on the full armor. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and the feet showed the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yep. To take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto on the perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. See the full arm of God? It reads there, see... Stand up, therefore, having your loins girt, girt about with truth, the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now it's talking about the armor that you have to wear, the a full armor that you have to carry with you, and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield, what shield of faith, the shield of faith wherewith. He shall be able to quench all the fiery darts that the wicked, of the wicked. See the, the, the shield, the grit line, and then the, the, the shoes, and what else? And to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is what? It's the Word of God. What did Jesus said when Satan tempted him in the desert when he walked there for 40 days? It's not man cannot live by bread alone, but by the word, the written word, by the written word. What written word? He was referring to the Old Testament. What is in the Old Testament? The law of God as well is written in the Old Testament. So you've got to put on the whole armor, not just the helmet, not just the sword, just taking a few bits. You've got to put it all on so that you can withstand the devil. As simple as that. So, yes, it's important to know that Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light so that he comes with devices to deceive us to something that really looks good. 
that really looks nice, but it's never the truth. It's something that will make you, oh, I feel it. Oh, I'm in a place that is wonderful. Satan's is not going to come and bring you like in a harsh environment. He's going to make you feel at home. Come to my church. Feel at home. Feel the presence. But is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it obeying what God has said? Do you believe in the true God that created you and me in his, his image? So we've got to be careful on what we base our belief in. Like I said, I don't worry what name the church is, even if it's cystic or banana tree, green fruit, whatever the kiwi fruit. But if it carries the truth, that's the church I will go to. Why? It's not the church that's going to save us. It's the truth that's going to save us. In the book of Isaiah, open ye the gates that the righteous may enter in. See, the righteous that keep the truth. Keep the truth may enter into thy gates. Oh, amen. So, um, just mm. wanted to add something. Yeah, there. yes, please. Um, Alan G. White mm -hmm. um, writes in the Great Controversies, If men would but study the book of God with earnest prayer, that they might understand it, they would not be left in darkness to receive false doctrines, but as they reject the truth, they fall a prey to deception. And I think this is where... Um, I can only speak on my experience where I have fallen because I've rejected the truth and it's more about um, not being or not dwelling within the Bible. So the more time I spend away from the Bible, then the more time, um, the more closer I'm getting to darkness. And it's like anything you, you do, uh, the more time you spend um, practicing basketball, mm -hmm. the better you get at it. The more time you spend preaching, the better you get at it. And it's um, a good example you brought up at the start with Elijah, who didn't fall for peer pressure mm -hmm. against all the prophets that were standing up against him. Um, Elijah stood um, even by himself because he knew the truth. And I think that's where um, a lot of people fall because they're not confident in the truth. Yes. They um, don't know the truth, um, not aware of the truth, so they then don't stand for the truth, but then they fall into the habits like the prophets. They um, go and live that comfortable life because um, they don't stand out, they don't want to fall for peer pressure. And it's still happening now. It still is. Um, you brought up Constantine where um, Christmas was brought in. Easter, and whoever stands against it is seen as different yeah, yeah. or mm -hmm. weird. You know? And when I was at school, I'd tell people I'm Seventh-day Adventist, and I'd get the funny look. Mm -hmm. um, what's Seventh-day Adventist? <coughs> and as a student, I didn't have a clue, because I didn't uh, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't um, dwelling in the Bible, I wasn't um, at one with the Bible, I wasn't at one with God, but now as I get older, I know a little bit. Amen. And this little bit I need to build on and work on because I have other little <coughs> beings that depend on me uh, yeah. to share the truth with them. And I think it's um, very important for, for us as Christians or as believers of God that we need to spend time. Even if it's five minutes a day, you need to spend time um, with the Bible and with God. Hey, it's funny you mentioned that because, um, you know, you get that funny look at eh, just by being a Seventh-day Adventist. But if you look throughout the whole Bible, I think majority of the Christians um, suffered, eh, pretty much. It, it's somewhat a lifestyle where um, Jesus has pretty much set the bar for us, you know, in terms of... Um, he was the most perfect person in the world, 100% man, right, was he? Yeah, yeah and he, he, was, he done nothing wrong, but yeah, he was, man, he was mistreated. And, yeah. and you know, and it's, it kind of, you know, gives you peace of mind knowing that, you know, if, if our father can do it, you know, it kind of keeps us going eh, throughout this journey of just being a Christian. So yeah, I can really relate to that, but. I'm seeing where a lot of it is um, 
the transition from Sabbath to Sunday is because they believe that when Christ came, it was the redemption for them that changed mm -hmm. their whole perspective. So for them to believe that Sunday is a day of worship is okay in their mind, and they believe that re redemption is far greater than the creation. But Jesus was there, I think, w without um, fervent studies, you would never know that Jesus was there from the very beginning. So nothing was changed from the beginning right up until the end. Nothing mm -hmm. has been changed. And when they say that, you know, um, Jesus is is the way, you know, the truth and the life, right? That if we accept him, he is just to forgive us. Yeah. You know, they, they, there's that excuse that they kind of blanket their belief. They fail to see that there's actually Correct, yeah. he is the truth but he's one part of the truth yeah mm -hmm. and if you truth. say that you love him wouldn't you wouldn't you desire to follow exactly what he does mm -hmm. you know and in and, and john 14 <coughs> 15 he says if you love me you will keep my, my commandments, commandments. Like that. and his yeah. commandments was there from the very beginning and the reason why i say that because he was there from the beginning yeah, exactly. so mm -hmm. it, it really is you know, Satan is the device around here, yeah. Yeah. and if you're not careful, and you don't study the, the word and, and pray constantly, mm. you're sure to follow that path, yeah, and you understand yeah. why they believe. I mean, even Jesus himself went to church. I mean, they say, um, you know, if you accept Jesus, you've accepted the Sabbath, but Jesus, you know, is, is plain, and yeah. you find it in Luke, Luke 4.16. Yeah. We say it was his custom to go to the synagogue to, to pray. Yeah. And it, you know. Yeah, and then they also go off on, on Paul. You know, they use Paul as mm. an ex as an example yeah. to why they believe, you know, Sunday is the, the Lord's Day. They say that Paul changes a lot of the scripture because he really writes the mm. gospel his way. But why did then Paul go to set us the synagogue on Sabbath? Yeah. Yeah. We tend to forget that Satan wasn't born yesterday. Yeah, he was right. around from the beginning. Correct. And I think one of the ways Satan gets to us is through our emotions, because yes. emotions is not something we can control. Mm. Well, yeah, mm. yeah. That's like things within nowadays with our youth and our the society is that we tend to put our emotions forward first before. And in Proverbs 28, verse 26, it says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh in wisely, he shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. It's just basically saying, he that trusts his emotions, yes. and put his emotions first, is a fool. Yeah. So walk the truth. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See, it's it's good that we're sharing here. See, uh, how Juno say that um, when... When you say I'm seventh day, I go to church on the Saturday, people will start to look different. Well, I used to be one of those. Well, if we met up, then I was like, oh, you, one of those. Because <laughs> <laughs> I used to live in Samoa. My house is right next to a seventh day church. <laughs> we were there before the church because they bought the land next to right our house. And then they built a church. But before they built the church, they would always come to work on Sunday. And then they start building their church, they finish, and then they will do, uh, come on uh, Sunday and do their volleys. And I would get very mad. Then uh, one day I decided when they were doing their church on Saturday, i get the radio and just blast it on Saturday. Because right, we're right next, we're just <coughs> divided by a fence wire, barbed wire, and that's it. And we just, I would just blast the radio onto them. Not knowing, but you know, this is the church over there in Chipsenga, <coughs> XDA. And then on Sunday, and then uh, I will see them playing their volley, I get mad again, and do it the next Saturday. I'll just blast the radio, but not knowing, you know. Then, if I knew now, I would like I'll probably join them because, but uh, I didn't so know you're, what you're, church. You're one of the haters. <laughs> yeah, well, when we go seven, I speak <laughs> or seven day, six. like uh, automatically. <laughs> I was, like, why they go to church on Saturday? But I did not know. So my limited understanding then, because yeah. I thought that Sunday was the day to worship, and I thought this is the church because it was based on Simon Peter. But when you get to know the scripture, you know, in the good verse, in the in the book of Acts seventeen, verse ten, it reads like. 
And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night to Berea, who hated them into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalon Thessalon can you read? Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. See, I always tell the people, don't just believe what I tell you. Sometimes it's best you go search. You're just like these people in Perea, that when they heard the word that Paul was speaking, they went and searched the scriptures daily. And when they searched it, they were more noble men than the people in uh, Thessalonia. So it's important to read the scriptures daily. And if you go to that same chapter, verse 2, And Paul, as his manner was, went into, de into them the three Sabbath day seasons with them out of the scriptures. So the manner of Paul was reading the scriptures. So he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Amen. 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 So I haven't been back to Samoa, you know. Just so to apologize. say sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's not going to say sorry to the church. I'm going to say sorry, God, I am sorry through my limited understanding mm -hmm. that I thought I was doing something, a good a favor for you. But no, why? Because I don't want to be like deceived from the devil because he's transforming himself into angel of light and trying to deceive the people that Sabbath is not the seventh day anymore. It's changed to the first day. Like how um, um, she, um, she typed it up. Because Jesus resurrected there. And how Liz has brought it up. Because it's better to go there. Because he lifts up your feelings, your emotions. The, the, the last bit of your mind that takes an all to the mo I mean the middle bit where it takes the emotion side of things. But the front it tells you the right decision to do right and do wrong. Where you make the right decision, is it on the emotions that we base our beliefs in? Or does it base on the truth? The Serapium and the Serapium. And in the back where you have your willpower to really make a stand like Elijah. Elijah made a stand. And God did show him who the true God is. Amen. Amen. But it's good to share like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. With all the, um, you mentioned about the consequences of sin, um, one of them is death, but um, what happens when we die? That's a good question. We, that's one appointment that's always coming. Yeah. I've never heard somebody in the time of Jesus say, have you died yet or are you still here? Do you see anybody here, the apostles here? They all, they have passed away. They've all died. Um... I think the age limit now is uh, very, because before the flood, they were reaching up 600, 700. Oh, wow, that's, that's centuries. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, you'll be lucky if you make it to 100. Or even lucky if you make it to 50. Or a blessing if you make it to what? 30. Or a blessing if you make it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what does happen when somebody dies? We have to go back to Genesis. Two, when God decided, the, the Trinity decided to form man into the image of God. So when I look around, it's the image of God. And then God, Jesus Christ came down and he worked and he formed man the dust of the earth and he breathed into his nostrils. And then Adam saw Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. Adam saw God that created the heavens and the earth. The word, spoken word that became flesh in the book of John. Adam saw God when Jesus breathed into his nostrils. And then it says, he became a living being. So, a lot of people believe that when somebody dies, they go straight to heaven. Amen. Amen. Some believe when they die to go to Pergamos. Purgatory, that they will, you know, spend a little while there, but we make some offering to get them to heaven. 
Some believe they go to jail, a spiritual day, jail. And some believe they still sleeping or lying dead on the grave, in the grave. So what does the Bible say? Well, we're just going to touch on a few verses. And then God for man. Yeah, okay, let's just go in the verse, um, Genesis 2, verse 7. If you got Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. See, the problem here when, when they say they breathe into what? To the, the breath of life, the nostrils. When we well, look in the book of Job 27 verse 3, And all the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. People, you know, when, it, when the Bible talks about spirit, it doesn't talk about spirit that's moving around and all this, going to heaven, come back. It's talking about the spirit or the breath of life. So when that breath of life is given to man, like how uh, Jesus breathed his breath into the nostrils of Adam, and he became a living man. So what is the formula for death? I'm a living man. And then the spirit goes out of me, or the breath goes out of me. I am a dead man, <laughs> not a zombie. <laughs> mm. uh, not half dead zombie. The movie's trying to make you believe that uh, when you die, don't worry, you don't really die. Your spirit's still somewhere roaming around. And then what happened? Your body stays what? If you read in um, Ecclesiastics, verse 12, chapter 12, verse 7. Verse, uh, chapter uh, 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as, as it was, was and, and the spirit shall, shall return unto, unto God who gave it. it. See, the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit or the breath of life that God has given us will return to, to God that gave us the breath of life. Not the spirit. So when you die, you sleep. You're still in the tomb. But my, well, um, in John 5 verse 28, Jesus puts it simple. Can somebody, verse John 5, 28. And then you can find out Job, um, Job 14 verse 12, please, Liz. 14, 10, and 12. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. See, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in that which all that are in the grave shall what? Hear his voice from where? The grave. The grave. So they're not dead and go straight to heaven. So, of course, you know, in Thessalonians 1, 1 Thessalonians uh, 4 verse 16, because for the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall what? Raise first. So when you die, can you read in, in the in, in the joke there please? 14, 10 and verse 12. 14, 10. I'll read up verse 10 and you read verse 12. But man dieth and wasteth away year Man giveth up the ghost, ghost is the spirit, or the breath of life, and where is he? And in verse 12, So man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be born out of their sleep. See, when you die, it's, it's like sleeping. Because when you're sleeping, you don't know what's happening around. And then when you're sleeping, if I sleep at 6 and then wake up at 7 in the morning, I don't know what happened between 6.01 and 6.59. Because I'm sleeping, I'm unconscious, I'm not, not, my mind's, you know, there, resting, sleeping. I do not know what's happening around. It's the same way when you put to death. You're sleeping in your grave, you're in your grave, waiting what? Jesus said, marvel not, 
they will hear my voice from the grave. And when Jesus' second coming, they will hear Jesus' voice, and then them that are in the grave will, will raise up first. So when you die, we'll keep it simple. That's another big topic that we can go into because there's so much different beliefs that when you die, you go to heaven. When you die, you go to Brickamus. You go to uh, Brickagory. Reincarnation. Well, reincarnation, Burger you know. <laughs> you're not Burger King. Yeah, but we love some Burger King. <laughs> but it's, when you die, let's just see and hear what the scripture says. And that's what we base our belief on. So when you die, you sleep. You don't know what's happening, but all you're waiting for when you wake up is because Jesus' voice has woken you up. And that's the best thing. And the only way to prepare yourself because death is an appointment that's not cancelled. It's coming and it will come for all of us. You cannot delay this appointment. It's going to come. But how do we prepare ourselves? The full armor of God. So we can, you know, withstand the devices and the deceitful ways that the devil is trying to deceive you. So that we will know what is the true Sabbath. That we will know when we die. We put in our minds, like Paul has, let's just finish off with Paul. 2 Timothy, uh, Timothy 4, verse um, 5, 6 and 7. And if you got 2 Timothy... And then we read off all together and we'll finish it off from there. Five. Yeah, four. Four verse five? Yeah, verse five and six and seven. Second Timothy four, verse five, six and seven. Can you okay. read off? But I watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Amen. Hold on. Yeah. See, the four things, the character that Paul um, has um, said to his spiritual son, Timothy. He said, what? Be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do thy work of evangelism. Making true proof of thy ministry. Not only be watchful, be alert, enduring all things. Because when you come to God, when you come to Jesus Christ, oh, your family is going to go against you, your friends going to go against you. Amen. Why do you go to that church now? We, we were born in this church. Our families from this church. Please come back to this church. Things like that's going to happen. And then what? They also say that, and, oh, yeah. and do the work of evangelism. Amen to the girls, uh, um, Liz and uh, Belletti, in the uniform, the TMI uniform. Amen. Youth in Christ, Moisu, they have given up one year of their life Amen. at their prime age. When they're Amen. strong, they can do so much for their families, but they decided to give up one year of their life to serve the Lord in the ministry, Amen. to complete 1,500 hours, not for playing or doing what they normally do, but to give it to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then it says, to what? And make full proof Christ of thy Christ. ministry. It means it's not the beginning that always the matter most. It's the finishing, the ending. You have to really complete the work. And then let's read what somebody that's completed the work. Verse 6. For well, I am now ready, ready to be offered, offered and, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. In verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but unto them who also the love his appearing. Amen. See the final words of Paul, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. They are laid up for me a crown of righteousness from the Lord, the righteous judge. Not only for me, but unto them that also love his appearing. When you die and you have given your life to Jesus Christ, on that day when you hear Jesus Christ's voice, you will be praised and you'll be grateful and thankful. This is our Lord that I was waiting for. This is the one Lord that I gave up all the other things that I was dear to me, but I gave my life to this Lord, who? My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. who
who will wake me up when I do die. So I pray that, you know, through this, not only helps me, but all the people that are out there. See, it's not about the church that matters. It's about the truth, the organic, what the Lord says. And that will help us through our struggles, our pain, our suffering, and our walk. I know we're going through an environment that's not easy right now because we're in that times that we're going to struggle more, we're going to have more suffering, more persecution, and it's not going to be easy. But through Jesus Christ, He will lighten the load and help us through. So may God bless everybody, and especially the panelists, Junior, Tai, Liz, and Billetti, and the people that help take the recording and all the supporters out there. We pray and that may God bless you. In Amen. Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. As you continue to walk with Christ, we pray that you open your hearts and your minds to the opportunity to grow within um, God's Word, the organic truth that we try to bring to you um, every fortnight. Um, and we pray that we may be able to speak the words of Paul one day that I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Amen. And we pray Amen. that you are blessed uh, through the following weeks to come. And I'd like to thank the panelists, my brothers and sisters, for uh, their input today, especially Amen. for Minister Joe for uh, his um, help with us during our uh, scriptures tonight. Um, pray that the Lord be with you, uh, Minister Amen. Joe, thank you. Um, in, in your work as well as uh, the TMI. Amen. Pray Amen. that the Lord Amen. bless you in your work as well as Sister Tai. I'd just like to ask. Um, Please bow your heads as I lead off um, in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to be able to share um, about your word and your organic truth, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, we don't know everything, and we pray that you uh, bless us with your um, Holy Spirit so that we may be able to share with the viewers mm -hmm. and anyone that is out there who is looking for your truth, Lord, may you be with them. Guide them in their walk with you, Lord, um, so that we may be able to speak the words of Paul, Lord, that we are able to, um, we were able to fight the good fight, Lord. Mm -hmm. We pray that you forgive us for our sins in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.